Joining us now from El Paso, member of the House Judiciary Committee, Democratic Assistant Whip Congresswoman Veronica Escobar of Texas. Her district includes the Walmart, where Saturday's mass shooting took place. In fact, it is the very same one her family often goes to. And Congresswoman Escobar, the president, is tweeting about the shootings and pairing what needs to be done with immigration reform. Uh, so once again, sort of sending out signals, even at this very difficult time. What's your response to that first? You know, I first want to say, Mika, that I live in mm -hmm. an extraordinary community. People have come together like never before. People are wrapping their arms around one another. We had two beautiful vigils last night. We are the epitome <clears throat> of goodness as a community. We welcome the stranger. We take care of the vulnerable. Um, and that is who El Paso is. And I'm, I'm so proud to be a member of this community. Words have consequences. And the president has made my community and my people the enemy. He has told the country mm -hmm. that we are people to be feared, people to be hated. He has done that at, at his rallies. He has done that through his Twitter. I heard earlier someone mention that he may be coming here. I hope that he has the self-awareness to understand that we are in pain and we are mourning and we are doing our very best in our typical, beautiful, graceful <clears throat> El Paso way to continue to be resilient. And so I would ask his staff and his team to consider the fact that his words and his actions have played a role in this. Congresswoman, all across America, um, parents and their little children are going to Walmarts and going to other local uh, places to get uh, supplies to go back to school. Um, it's, a, it's a rite of passage that we've all done, that we all do, uh, except in your district this weekend, little children and their mothers and their family members were gunned down and killed uh, because a white nationalist was inspired by the language of politicians and some of the things that he saw on TV and some of the things that he saw online. Obviously, we've shown clips of the President of the United States laughing uh, when he's talking about the invasion of Hispanics. And somebody in the crowd says, shoot them. And he laughs and makes a joke about it. And the whole crowd starts laughing time and time again. Uh, if you could, tell me about some of your constituents. Tell me about some of the people in your district who were shot and killed simply because they went out to get school supplies to go back to school in a few weeks um, and unfortunately found themselves in the crossfire uh, inspired by political hate. Joe, there were some incredible acts of heroism. Uh, among those, a young mother and a young father who used their bodies as a shield to protect their infant child. Both of those beautiful lives are gone. The infant is alive, but is now an orphan. Mm. There were kids who were having a fundraiser for their soccer team outside of the Walmart, raising money for their team with their parents and their teammates and their coach. And when the gunman, when the shooter approached, they ran inside to hide in the bakery. One of their mothers told me that the shooter went inside after them and yelled, where are you? Looking for those kids. There are stories about elderly couples who were at the checkout. Their one story, one elderly gentleman paying while his wife waited on a bench while he paid for their groceries. As the gunman ran, ran in, the wife was um, escorted to the back hurriedly. Uh, people were being shuffled to safety. Her husband didn't make it, and she has to live with that survivor's guilt. All of this has happened because 
Hispanic people have been dehumanized. They have been dehumanized by the president, by his enablers, by other politicians. This is one of the lowest points in American history. And if we don't recognize this as such, we will not have the turning point that we so desperately need as a country. Congresswoman Escobar, you have aptly and accurately described the president's participation in what happened this weekend, his ongoing participation in, during his presidency in what built up and led to this weekend. I would like to get your reaction to a tweet that he just issued. This is Donald J. Trump, President of the United States, two minutes ago with this tweet. The media has a big responsibility to life and safety in our country. Fake news has contributed greatly to the anger and rage that has built up over many years. News coverage has got to start being fair, balanced, and unbiased, or these terrible problems will only get worse. That's from the President of the United States. What was your, what's your reaction to that? It is shocking to me that he is so utterly self-aware. And this is why, from my perspective, he is not welcome here. He sure. should not come here while we are in mourning. This is one of the sites of one of his rallies. I heard Mika um, uh, earlier mention that violence increased Statistically, violence went up, uh, hate crimes went up in communities where he had held rallies. He came into one of the safest communities in the nation. And as a result, or maybe not as a result, that is probably unfair. But months later, a gunman came into our community. Someone from outside of this community came into this beautiful, tranquil, loving place to do us harm. I would encourage the president's staff members to have him do a little self-reflection. I would encourage them to show him his own words and his actions at the rallies, because we're not going to get past this until there is acknowledgement from the very top that we need to heal, that this whole country is hurting, that there has been bigotry and racism and hatred that has been stoked at all levels. And as the president, he has the most significant authority and responsibility mm -hmm. to show this country, to lead this country into healing. And now is the time, and he needs to accept responsibility, everyone does, for what has gotten us to this point. So since the president said, uh, tried to blame his hatred uh, on the quote fake news. Why don't we just take him at his own word and let's play the clip. Uh, let's play the clip again where he laughs uh, and he keeps talking about the invasion of Hispanics. Alex, uh, play the clip where he laughs when somebody says that Hispanics should be shot. This is an invasion. When you see these caravans starting out with 20,000 people, that's an invasion. I was badly criticized for using the word invasion. It's an invasion. But how do you stop these people? You can't. There's no... That's only in the panhandle you can get away with that statement. So it's a tough situation. Again, like Walter said, I see a lot of white people laughing when somebody says Hispanics should be shot. Uh, I see two young African-American girls looking confused and looking at their parents. But <clears throat> again, I, just in case the president thinks that's fake news, let's, let's look at this clip His again. Words. This is Donald Trump talking about an invasion. And I do want to say again, you can look at Donald Trump's own government statistics, illegal border crossings when Donald Trump became president of the United States were at a 50 year low. Illegal border crossings have exploded exponentially since Donald Trump 
became president of the United States and whipped up this crisis. But the, the president says it's fake news. What? When we quote his own words, here's a president of the United States whipping up hatred and frenzy, talking about invasions that when he was president of the United States didn't exist. They were at 50-year lows. Lowest point since I was like five years old. And here's Donald Trump saying invasion time and again to whip the crowd into a frenzy and then say, what can we do? And somebody says, shoot them. And the president laughs and then gets a huge applause. Let's play this clip again and you decide whether you think it's fake news or not. When you see these caravans starting out with 20,000 people, that's an invasion. I was badly criticized for using the word invasion. It's an invasion. But how do you stop these people? You can't. There's no. That's only in the panhandle you can get away with that statement. So it's a tough situation. The president is laughing because it's funny. Everybody in the crowd thinks it's funny that they're talking about shooting Hispanics. Play it again, Alex. This is an invasion. When you see these caravans starting out with 20,000 people, that's an invasion. I was badly criticized for using the word invasion. It's an invasion. But how do you stop these people? You can't. There's no. That's only in the panhandle you can get away with that statement. Only in the panhandle. So it's a tough situation. Congresswoman, uh, is it fake news that the president of the United States, we played the clip three times, is sitting there talking about invasions of Hispanics and then leading the crowd in a big roar and laugh and applause when somebody says, shoot Hispanics? Joe, when I first saw that clip um, after, right after the, the rally, I have to tell you, it was very painful to hear. It's actually even more painful to listen to now. Um, I worried. I worried about what was going to happen in our country. I have to again say that in El Paso, we have chosen to look at hate and return that with love. And we are going to keep doing that. We are going to continue to be a kind, generous, loving community, a unified community, a strong, resilient community. All of the people who rushed to the assistance of those who were gunned down, those who were injured, they are incredible, incredible heroes. And every single one of the families that has been touched by this horrific tragedy, they are going to need a lot of support, a lot of goodwill, that's what we are going to focus on in El Paso. That is going to be our mission to make sure that everyone gets all the help and support that they need, the comfort that they need. We are going to continue to emulate goodness and charity and love, regardless of what has been wrought upon us. Victoria, this is Eddie uh, Glaude here. I wanted to ask, ask you to dive a bit deeper into uh, something you mentioned earlier as a kind of broader context. You talk about these demographic shifts. We tend to focus on Donald Trump, and we're right to do so in terms of his rhetoric and the like. But there seems to be a deeper crisis here with regards to how we think of the country, how we think about ourselves. Could you talk a little bit about what some scholars will, talk, will describe as a crisis in whiteness that's being evidenced in these actions? So say a little bit more about the demographic shifts that, are, that you're experiencing in Texas, that we're experiencing across the country as the backdrop to this violence in interesting sorts of ways. Right, Eddie. So I, I'm Texas sorry, but... is a microcosm of what is happening in the rest of the country. Even though Texas has had a historically large Latino population concentrated in the southern part of the state, from El Paso down to the Rio Grande Valley, we have seen over the last couple of decades a very rapid increase of the Latino population. 
And what we have seen is the consequence of that in terms of the ballot box. So there has been a pushback in wanting to resist this demographic growth. So in wanting to pack folks into certain districts and limit the political uh, voice of Latinos. So we see this in Texas and we also see this nationally. It's not a coincidence that the rise of the Tea Party nationally and most strongly in Texas happened in 2010, right at the time that we saw the boom of Hispanic demographic explosion here in Texas and across the country. As human beings, just psychologically, we don't like change. Change is hard on our brains. And demographic change is no exception. So as voters, as Americans see demographic change, again, there's two forks in the road. We accept it, we, we, we celebrate it, or we get tense and we get scared. Human nature is one that kind of shies from difference and diversity. You have to proactively work toward embracing that diversity. It's the harder road, and the easier road is just pushing and otherizing and dehumanizing. And that is a bit of the, the context that President Trump has picked up on as a result of these demographic changes we have seen over the last couple of decades. Well, and, and Mika, mm -hmm. those, those demographic changes that Victoria spoke of were in the gunman's uh, manifesto. Mm -hmm. Where at first he goes, well, I'm not Democratic or Republican, but and he goes on and says that Democrats, because of this Hispanic invasion that Donald Trump was talking about, uh, that Hispanics uh, are going to keep uh, growing uh, in, in Texas and that Democrats will win the state of Texas forever tipping the balance of American politics in the, 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 the hands of Democrats. So what Victoria just said, right. actually the gunman put in his manifesto. That's how connected politically he was to what Donald Trump and what others have been saying. And Victoria, thank you very much for being on this morning. And Congresswoman Veronica Escobar, we are so sorry. And we're also uh, so you. blessed to have your voice in Washington and in El Paso. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back. This is an invasion. When you see these caravans starting out with 20,000 people, that's an invasion. I was badly criticized for using the word invasion. It's an invasion. But how do you stop these people? You can't. There's no... That's only in the panhandle you can get away with that statement. So it's a tough situation. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.